and it's coming, I'm telling you. Going uh home -huh, with a win, man. It feels great. Hey, man, keep stacking them, keep stacking them. One more to go. Well, gotta get the one next week, we'll be good. <laughs> with a huge win over the Colts. Welcome in Raiders Game Day, presented by America First Credit Union. Aaron Coscarelli alongside former Raider quarterback Bruce Gradkowski. It is so good to see you. Welcome to the show. It's going to be a fun show, I'll tell you that much. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Big time. And of course, our <laughs> shut down, locked down corner, Eric Allen, to join in the Big mix. Win. <laughs> Always good to have you. Uh, gentlemen, a walk-off field goal, courtesy, of course, Daniel Carlson. Their third straight W. Whew. Initial Man. takeaway from week 17. That's Ian. the way you honor the icon. Mm. Mr. Madden. That's how you get it done. Just a traditional, all phases of the game, special teams, offense, defense, all playing a part in the big dub. Mm. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, situational football. Yes. When yes. they needed plays, they made them. And that's what was the key this week. And I love to see, you can look at the stat line and all the stats and all that. At the end of the day, I'm looking for those key fourth down conversions, third down conversions. Yep. And they did it tonight. Oof, man, we've got so much to talk about. Vegas, of course, stringing those W's together. A lot to get to on the show. Here is what we are serving up for you. Of course, game highlights. We got first and yep. second half uh, highlights for you, player coach reaction. And of course, we are going to honor the Hall of Fame coach himself today. All of the NFL did, Mr. John Madden, of course. But first, let's take you through how this game got started in the first half as the Raiders look to stay in the win column on the road in Indy, honoring, of course, John Madden with helmet decal decals. Very cool indeed. First quarter we go. And Josh Jacobs kind of picking up where he left off. Yeah, huh? for sure. Yeah. Particularly after that offensive line continuing to get better. And again, first drive was money today. Oh, their first 15. These are the first 15 plays you script heading into the game. And they were on point, switching personnel groupings, mixing it up. And the offensive line surely got started fast. Man, Josh Jacobs looking good right there along with that interior offensive line doing an outstanding yep. job. Andre James, Leatherwood, Simpson getting it done. Best way I think they started the season so far, but they knew he <laughs> would be to stop this guy, Jonathan yeah. Taylor, right? You seen Guacu yeah. and Guacu was yeah. like, yo, hey, yeah. Yeah. I'm not letting you get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Great job there. I think he, he dominated today. He had an outstanding game. Here my man Casey Hayward making a play on the ball. You love to see that too. Of course, from our corner himself, appreciation of a pass breakup, but ooh. Yeah. Derek Carr with the interception. The one thing you can't do with Deshaun Jackson is under throwing. Uh, Just throw the ball out there. Great point. Carr was a tad late. They brought like a cover zero blitz. He could have got out a little quicker and leave it downfield, let him run under it. Yeah. We're going to talk about the defense <laughs> in this show, but Carson went smothered a lot yeah, I mean, by the D. I, I thought great job of downfield, right? Corners locking on, having some sticky defense there. No one to throw yeah. the ball to. And Back I'll tell you what. Get, Gus Bradley, the plan, having some guy, a linebacker up in the A-gap, mm -hmm. blitzing the defensive back off the slot, great changeup. Absolutely, Bruce. Well, here we go. I mean, it's all about special teams and what Hunter Renfro oh, can man. do. Saying, nope, get out of here. I'm on my way. Returns the punt, 41 yards, gentlemen. You know, he is a Madden guy, <laughs> right? He's oh, a Madden guy, man. right? I he mean, does, return right. punts, tackles, yeah. catches, does a little bit of everything. Yeah, he certainly does. Of course, the Ooh, first tough down. Yards right there. Tough yards, third and ten. So yes. so situational football. A big one here, gentlemen. 47-yard field goal. Daniel Carlson made of ice. And we're going to talk about him a little yeah. later in the show. Why isn't he in the Pro Bowl? Come on, get, get that guy in the Pro Bowl. <coughs> Snub. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Zay Jones doing Zay Jones-like things. Good for a 26-yard yeah. catch. The double point for the first down. That's the first time I've seen that. I like it. Zay Damn. Jones continues to make plays. Hunter Renfro. I mean, these guys just connecting. This guy after the catch, man. He's a <laughs> headsy. He's just a football player. That's right. Yeah, you He's love that. Football player, I love that guy. 
Do you love when Marcus Mariota gets in on it? I like the package. I love the changeup. I love, I love it. the changeup. Right. Keeps, the key keeps your, the defense on their heels. I yes. mean, now they don't know what's coming. Hey, if you got them, use them. How about Daniel Carlson? Once again, why is this guy not in the Pro Bowl? Clutch. Come on now. E, we're going to ask that question, <laughs> I think, all day, huh, E? 13 3, Colts down by 10, looking to respond. Yeah, they, they had a nice little drive here, took advantage of our young rookie linebacker. Just, you really in position but not able to make the play and he does make a play later on but again that's what they did in that drive and I felt like that was their most earned touchdown yes. right there of yeah. the game yeah uh, you know so look the Raiders gave up one right there mm -hmm. um, but I just they responded in the second half they to did. come really back. Did. They did. Really did. I, that's what I was going to ask you. So you saw that drive, the uh, the Colts coming back. How are we feeling heading into the second half? How, what are we saying to the guys? We're up by three. We're I'm, still in a good situation, right, but right. we don't want to let off the gas. I'm thinking we're going to halftime, and we have an opportunity. We have a chance, right? That's all we need is to have an opportunity to keep that lead, be able to come back out of halftime like we've done in the past, have some strong drives, some defensive stops, get the ball back to our offense and hopefully offensively score some points that we're in a good position absolutely and, and look that's the flow of a game you know it there's going to be highs and lows you got to manage that and I thought that's what the Raiders did great today it's not going to be pretty all the time you got to manage the ups and downs they did that today and they made plays when they needed to especially being up then have to absolutely. come come back from being behind I just thought it was a good game overall well can they manage that three-point lead. Let's roll the tape and take you to the second half, shall we? Raiders up by three. We discussed this, but, ooh, the Colts nipping on those heels, guys. Yeah, outside the pocket. Yes. I mean, Carson Wentz is really good at this. What a what play. Oh. Intercept. What? Uh, come on now. Yeah. That was hey, not your, that's an overthrow. You gotta, <laughs> we got to get all those tips. We got to get all those overthrows. That was just one catch of the day. Is, is it like baseball? Should they call it? I got it. I got no, it. No, you're going gonna to get that one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Carson. Second, Listen, this INT. guy is one of the best linebackers in the National Football League. We're going to see him in the middle of the football field, and he's going to go and start covering space, right? So once he realizes, hey, man, I'm not covering anybody, let me leak myself back into the middle of the field and undercut this over route. Great job by Darius Leonard, one of the best in the league, caused a fumble today, had an interception. We won't see many linebackers as talented as Darius Leonard. Oh, uh, Carr took a shot right there, and you're right. Darius Leonard, heck of a play, but Carr, that's uncharacteristic, like just coming back late mm -hmm. to a crosser, not seeing that linebacker. And, you know, Darius Leonard made a good play. Yep. Well, the theme of the season, gentlemen, has been responding to adversity. Yes. And, of course, Derek Carr right there slinging it to his guy right there. Zay's like, yeah, you, you did Yeah, good. I got you. you. Zay, Zay, Zay was I got you. money today. <laughs> oh, so good today. Money, money like this. Touchdown right Ooh, here. Man, fourth down. Love it. Key downs. They bring Zay Jones in short motion, trying to get that pick you defenders uh -huh. hate. Right. And Carr doing a great job extending the play. Man, just, All right, gentlemen. We're fast forwarding. Fourth quarter, two minutes left. Game tied. 20 all. How does this game end? Oh, man. I'm nervous I'm, at this point. I'm, I'm yeah. nervous. But another Zay. Uh, reception again at the top of his route, kind of you know gives him That's a little, a good route. little forearm <laughs> yeah. in the chest hey. to get some separation. <laughs> you don't like that, but I do. Be a little physical <laughs> at the top of your route. Uh -huh. Yeah. Look at the the, the movement oh, by that, Derek that, right there. That right there Sweet is feet. just professional quarterback right there. Mm -hmm. That's how you keep the play alive. You climb the pocket, and again, you know Hunter has an outstanding catch radius. Look at the sideline. Too. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at look at Max. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bird on him. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah, so athletic. Wait, you're, you're right about Carr in the pocket right there, keeping his eyes downfield and feeling the pressure uh -huh. and avoiding it, and then making a throw, a dime right over the defender and Renfro. I mean, he's just a guy. Yeah, he is. TD called back because he was down by contact. But guess what? When you have Carlson in the mix, it doesn't matter. 33-yard game-winning walk-off field goal. Yeah. Carr is stoked. Carson Wentz, not so much. And the Raiders keep their postseason hopes alive with a big W on the road in Indianapolis. Here Ooh. are your final games. Yep. Yes, brought you by EC. Water. You know what I like right 31 there. 3 wow. coming to the game. We had to be around 31, 32. Just have more 
uh, opportunities to score than they did. We had 61 plays, I think. They had like 50-something. So all those numbers, to me, are important, not necessarily the rushing yards. We know Johns was going to get his, right? Yeah. right? But he never really impacted the game like he has been in the past. He got 100 yards. They lost. I just love the fact that we were able to get the time possession, then it was third down. Just killing on third down. Uh, I mean, unbelievable job all around. And, you know, I go back to just situational football, the third down conversions, the fourth down when they needed them. I yeah. mean, it wasn't pretty the whole time. Uh, they gave up some plays, a few explosive plays in the running game for Jonathan uh -huh. Taylor. Yep. But at the same yep. time, too, they managed them. I thought they did do a good job stopping him overall. Right. Just a good job defensively and then Carr and the offense making plays when they had to. Absolutely, Bruce. Now, with the win over the Colts, the Raiders are now 9-7. and seven. They can clinch a playoff berth their first time since 2016 as you take Man. a look right here. Uh, they are sitting in the eighth spot at nine and seven, and they won the tiebreaker because of the Dolphins, the uh -huh. Ravens, and the Steelers. But they've got a big date next week against mm, the humongous. Chargers. But before we talk about that, I want to get your guys' opinion because who would have thought, Bruce, three weeks ago when you were in this very studio. <laughs> That's right. That's you were right. covering <laughs> the Raiders-Chiefs game. The Raiders got blown out. I don't know how many people would have seen what this team has been up against and what they've been through and to be sitting in this, mm. the, the seat that they're in right now. It's so exciting. And, and I, I'm going to take blame for that Chiefs lot. <laughs> I, I had a blue suit on that day, okay? Ah. So I had to pull out the silver and black today. Yeah, there you go. Looking it's, good, it's too. A little, a little tight. You know, a little tight. It's, it was last worn in the summer. But I'll tell you what I had to for my Raiders. The silver and black, baby, were on that playoff run. And we talked about it a few weeks ago. What we had to do, to take care of the board. You play teams that are chasing for that playoff spot, you're knocking them down. One. Two, three, you got your fourth one right now. Take care of business in your own house in Vegas. I'm coming back. Throw yeah. some dice. There you go. Ooh, I like it. What does that mean? That means Bruce needs to wear it and like never take the suit that's off. Right, that's right. That's right. For sure. Yeah. He's he's gotta be, it. You know, he's looking clean, adapting. I think that's what the key term for me is, just to be able to have the coaching staff adapt to what you have, right? Yeah. You don't have Waller, who's kind of this ultra great receiver, uh, tight end. Don't have him. So you just adapt and make Absolutely. sure you're running game. Well, I love it, gentlemen. We still have so much more fun on Raiders game day coming up. We are honoring the late, great coach John Madden. You know how proud he must be right now and talk about what he means to the NFL. Stick around. Raiders game day is brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation made to chill. And by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. My first impression of John was a gentle giant with a personality. Hey! Hey, throw the goddamn flag! John Madden really had a commanding presence. I mean, he was humorous, he was bright, he was intense. He was everything you could ever want in a coach. He was great with players. He wanted to win, and he believed in the Raiders. He believed in silver and black. He had the right attitude. He was smart. He was a very good technique guy. He knew what he was doing. That's the key. There's not many coaches. You can't find one that look and acted like John Madden. Hey, Johnson, get in the huddle! On the sidelines, up and down, trying to get a referee's attention. Get over here! <laughs> you don't even watch the time. You sit back there and just throw it. You ever plug one on them? There was no doubt when he was getting upset. The world knew it. He was just so animated, uh, verbally, physically, and in every way. But that was John. He got more excited than the players. He had the passion and the fire. He could psych you up by just talking to you. It fired us up. Loved him. But he had a soft side to him, too. He cared about his players. He loved his players.
Coach Mann had three rules. When I talk, nobody talks. Be on time and go like hell when I ask you to. No hair codes, no dress codes, no curfews. He gave us a lot of room to be the kind of player that we wanted to be on the field, be the kind of person we wanted to be off the field. Great mentor. He would say the right thing to me before a game and set me off. Let's start off and stay after the whole game. Let's hey! He knew what buttons to push on each guy to motivate him. I've always said that John's strong suit as a coach was not X's and O, but his strong suit was the way that he handled us and communicated with us and kept us going in the right direction. He understood each player as they were, the person that they were. He loved everybody, he pulled for everybody, he worked for everybody, and he had no problem helping anybody. He was just a phenomenal person. John helped raise us. He was a lineman at heart. I love John Madden. John was great for us. He was for the players. He would do anything for the players. John Madden. The NFL celebrating the life of a legend. Of course, a moment of silence before all NFL games today to honor the Hall of Fame coach, John Madden, who passed away this week. And as we honor coach with a win, um, I get a little choked up and a little emotional when I, when I see stuff with John Madden because it feels like he really loved his players. Sure I, did. I feel that. Yeah. And I, did, I never had the opportunity to, to meet him. Do you, do you have a... Oh, man, let me tell you. So... Uh, he had the NFC East package, which was the Cowboys, uh, Washington, uh, the Giants, and of course the Eagles and the Phoenix Cardinals or the Arizona Cardinals, which were in St. Louis at the time. But when he would come back, he was coming back there to see Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White and Brett Favre and those guys. And I kept hearing like, Madden, Madden, Madden's here. And he would never interview me, right? He would never <laughs> interview me. And he said, you gotta make some plays before I interview you, right? <laughs> and so that was the thing. When he came to do your games, you had to make sure you showed out. So he would come and have to interview you. And so that was my whole thing, my first couple years in the season. And after the 90 season, our defense finished like number one. I had like six picks and I had to sit down. I got to, be on the bus and talk to oh, him, wow. and wow. he is just such a smart coach. That was the one thing that I don't think people really understood, that through all the boom and, and bomb and all that stuff, he was a smart, mm. intelligent, understood every position, and wanted to know why you did certain things, uh, how you covered Jerry Rice and all those. So, I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful human being, and uh, he could like relate to every person on the football mm. field. Uh, I mean, I think that's such a great point, relating to everyone on the field, but just think of everyone around the world yeah. and in the country for having the Madden game. And when you play, I remember a story my wife and I, when we lived in, uh, we, we, I was playing for the Raiders in Oakland. We lived in San Francisco. And one night, it was in the off season, it was a Sunday night. We're at mass down in San Francisco in the city. And we're at the back of church, it's right before communion. And I'm like, Miranda, I think that's John Madden right there. And he's in a pew and you're all, I'm getting nervous, man. I'm like, I'm like starstruck. And then I say, hi coach. He's like, hey Bruce. And I was like, oh man, he knows my name. <laughs> you know, and it was just such a cool experience. And look, it was during mass. I didn't want to interrupt him too much. But man, just, you could tell he's a humble, mm -hmm. loving human being that just kind of was real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gentle giant with a personality is how he was described awesome. and of course 10 years only with the Raiders advanced to the postseason eight times and you got to give credit to Al Davis yeah. because he decided he was a linebackers coach and decided to uh, promote John Madden and made him the youngest head coach in the NFL could, at 32 at the time. Could you imagine what John Madden and Al Davis are talking about right now. Oh, I know. I mean, with this they're cheers in. Las Vegas. And, oh, I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> they're talking for. Hey, yeah, coach, coach, yeah, let's sit yeah, down. Yeah, what did right, you see right, on right. that play? Why did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Get right to business. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, look, John Madden went to the postseason eight times. Current head coach Rich Bisaccia looking to do that same thing, take his squad to the postseason. We're going to hear from Coach on the other side of the break. Stick around. We, 
we came into the game with, with um, a little bit of a mentality of if we got ourselves in fourth and two, fourth and one situations, we, we thought we had a good enough package um, where we could do some of those things. And, and I thought you saw Derek create today. You know, I thought he had two or three, you know, two for sure, top of my head, and I know I think three plays where he created and, and made big plays. So when he has the ability to step up like that and move himself around a little bit and, and uh, put himself in position to create, whether it's third down, fourth down, whatever, um, you know, he did a good job with that. And I thought against a, a formidable front, our, our offensive line bowed up today and, and did a heck of a job and, and um, protecting him for the majority part of the day. Talking about the big W in Indy against the Colts, uh, a way to celebrate John Madden. And, of course, the Raiders still very much in with playoff implications on the line. Uh, when you hear a coach talk about that and the way Derek Carr has executed, I want to talk about his fourth down execution momentarily. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you take away from Coach's play calling? Because that first drive, Bruce, you even said it. You 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 were impressed. Yeah. Well, it's a, that's the first 15. You you go over that the night before the game, your first 15 plays. And, of course, you go off script sometimes. But I thought they stuck to it pretty well. I love them changing personnel groupings, put Marcus Mariota in there for a few. So you keep the defense on their heels. Yeah. And I felt like they converted some key third downs in those situations. And that was huge on the road to establish a drive, to put a touchdown, a scoring drive on the board, er, board, board early in Indy was huge to get the game started. Yeah, I like the fact also you hear a lot of kill, kill, kill on those first scripted plays. That means, hey, we're just going to go with the play that was called, basically. And I think that's the best thing that they were able to do because they get a rhythm going. And once you get that rhythm, particularly with the offensive line, I think then you can really count on some of those plays, those specialty plays that are set up later on. They're going to work out for you. So, again, I thought overall that first drive was really significant for the outcome of the game later on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, what I love, and he talked about it right there, was executing on fourth and one, fourth and two. Let's roll the tape. <laughs> and what did you guys see? Were you stoked when coach called go for it on fourth and two? I loved it. I was yeah. loving it too. And <laughs> here's, ah. here's the thing is you love them making sure that Derek feels comfortable outside the pocket yeah. creating plays. Well, here's the thing too. Sometimes Coach Passaccia, you're an interim head coach. Oh, I should play by the book. I should just kick it here. No, you're playing to win the game. And that call right there on fourth and two, he's playing to win the game and put the ball in his playmaker's hands and Carr extending. Make it. Look, that wasn't a called sprint out. Carr just reacted to it. He reacted and, and found Hunter yeah. Renfro. It was just a great play all around. But I love the confidence he has in his guys to say, look, this is playoff football right now, the last three weeks. Yeah. And we're going for it, man. We're going for the win. Yeah. Well, and it says, I trust my offense. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. says, I trust my offense. And, of course, they go out, they deliver, they execute. And another guy he trusts, and certainly you're starting to see the chemistry between Zay Jones yes. and Derek Carr unfold. In fact, Zay Jones over 100 yards receiving for the first time. Yeah. Way to go, Zay. Way to go. 120 yards receiving on the day. Yeah. And I think... In the beginning, he wanted to be like the speed guy, right? But when Edwards got hurt, he kind of moved into that possession role, and he has flourished, you see. He is really coming to his own tough catches in the middle of the football field, getting hit. Yes. Okay, not everyone's going to be able to do that. You know you're going to get plastered. You know you're going to get hit. You? I have a question for Bruce. <laughs> no, I have a question for Bruce because you're right. He has had synergy. How tough is that to have to kind of get – comfortable with a new guy. Not that Zay's new by any means, yeah. but he's being more involved in the offense as a quarterback. What's that like? No, you're exactly right, because you need to know your, you got to trust your guy. And you're building that trust with one another. And Zay Jones today, he just went up a notch on Carr's belt. I mean, you're, you're saying, now he's got Hunter Renfro, Zay Jones, hopefully we get Waller back. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you're building a nice little package offensively. Carr's building that confidence, Zay Jones stepping up. And most importantly, Zay Jones' confidence has to yeah. take a step up now. Yeah, I love sure. it. Especially a team that has missed Darren Waller yeah. over the last couple of weeks. All right, coming up next, third down, Derek Carr looking pretty good. We're going to show you why my gentlemen right here, Bruce, EA, are going to break down what they saw on third down. Stick around. We'll be right back. This segment of Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by Twitch. Watch. Discover. Join in. Hey, Raiders Game Day back.
back with you as the Raiders celebrating a huge Week 17 win against the Colts. And you know what? Derek Carr engineered his 29th fourth quarter comeback win. The man can slice, he can dice. And you know what, E? He so, looks pretty good on third down, Hey, huh? man, that's the money down, right, bros? <laughs> money down. Yeah. Third down, got to keep the ball away from their talented offense, Jonathan Taylor and all those guys. This is how you get it done. Derek Carr getting it done here on third down, like EC said. I want to roll a highlight right now. Again, you've got to be able to have trust in your receivers throwing it behind the sticks and allow him to run for the first down. That's a great example of a guy having trust in his receiver. Absolutely. Zay Jones does a good job right here. Catch and run after putting his shoulder down, getting the first down. Good accurate football to move the chain. Love it. Another first, another third down here. Derek Carr again, got a bunch situation, really showing the defense a little different look here. Has some creativity on third down. And again, Derek Carr stepping up in the pocket, gets the check down. And again, the thing that I see, throw it behind the sticks and allow your receiver to go get it. Well, and this was huge because they were backed up and look at his eyes looking left and he gets his check down and let your back do the rest. Let him it's get it okay. done. <laughs> you love that fact that the receivers are getting that run after catch. And again, another creative play way of getting three receivers on one side, getting that bunch kind of look. You'll see here, Zay Jones, I love this as an offensive player, but hate as a defensive player because it's almost like a pig play. Get a little rub there, right? You're, you're exactly right. Look, they bring Zay Jones in short motion, and Hunter Renfro, he knows what to do. Yeah. So he gets a little pig. Zay Jones rubs off oh, easy man. first down. As a defender, you hate that kind of stuff, right? And I think I still could have completed that one, That's too. right. So again, uh, here we go. This is a big time third down here. 54 seconds left. We're in the fourth quarter. This is where you need to make that play. Derek Carr, look at this. Let's climb the pocket a little bit. DC, woo! Accuracy on the ball to his main man, Hunter Renfro. I'll tell you what, this was one of the best graded throws for us at PFF this weekend. He avoided the defender in the pocket. Little side shuffle there. Right. Play some ballerina in a, you know, <laughs> and then laid a dime over top. Uh, look at look this at the ball. excitement from the sideline. Yeah, all the guys jumping up. They eventually call this down by contact, which is, well, I mean, you can say what you want, I guess by the rules, but Come on. Hunter Renfro again makes himself present. DC making an incredible throw on third down, keeping the ball away from that uh, really good offense on the Indianapolis Colts. Third down, the money down. That's according right. According to Bruce, <laughs> I love it. All right, coming up next, we're gonna hear from the money guy himself, Derek Carr at the podium. That is next for you here on Raiders Game Day. Stick around, we'll be right back. I think so. Um, we, we, we still have one more to go, but we're finishing better, right? Um, I think that's a couple, three, two or three, three in a row. And at the end of the year, that's all we've talked about. That's all we talked about before the season. And um, for whatever reason, we, we have adversity this season. We have adversity in the games. Uh, you know, it's almost like, gosh, can we get a can we get a break? You know, here there. Uh, but we'll take we'll take the wins. Trust me. Um, no matter how we have to do it, we're finding a way to do it because we have the right kind of guys. And there's never been a doubt. There's never a, a finger pointed. Um, you know, at this or that. And. You know, this coach is not there and all this kind of like we just nobody cares, you know, and we have a bunch of guys that believe that and just keep going. Adversity in the game, adversity this season, and of course he came back from a couple of turnovers yep. to show what adversity looks like and respond and of course deliver Raider Nation with a W. When you hear uh, your quarterback say that, what's your guys' reaction? I love it. Yeah. I love the fact he owns it and he always has owned it and it's just this time that uh, he's owning it with some defense behind his back. So he's able to yes. make a couple mistakes and get the ball back, get his team in a position to win. Well, and I love what he said, too, there when he's talking about handling the adversity because that's what they did, and they never, you know, went different directions. They've all been pulling the rope in the same direction, and that's key, man. When you face adversity, how can you stay together as a group? I think he's done a good job through his leadership around the team in the locker room during some tough situations. <sighs> Absolutely. He doesn't get enough credit for what he has managed to do this season and overcome. And you talk about resilient. How about his number one target in Mr. 
Hunter Renfro, yeah. number 13. When you guys see him play, Eric, oh, for you, E, what, what, what makes this guy so like special? I, I'm always trying to figure out a way how to relate what he's doing to one of my sons who plays receiver. I mean, th this is a guy, here's what we're going to have to look at this week, because Renfro did this move. You use Renfro move. as the Oh, as yeah, <laughs> for he's sure. A, hey, he's he's right. big time in the Allen household <laughs> because of all this stuff. I want my son playing just like this, Hunter Renfro. Hey, EA, yeah, I, was, I, I was a head coach in high school this year. And I come away from this game all day. I'm thinking, man, I got a receiver. I need to set up like Hunter Renfro. He's a guy that'll you know move the chains for us, get open. I just he's just such a good football player. player. Yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you what, I think I'd be a Pro Bowl quarterback if I had him. Yeah, just saying. Sure. Just saying. No, he he does a phenomenal job. He just has such a good feel for the game, finding windows and zones, beating man to man. Just such a reliable guy, yeah. and it's starting to open up, up other receivers. You yeah. see the game Zay Jones had today. Yeah, for sure. Just love the way he plays football. And like I said before, I think he would be an all Madden type of player. Ooh, all Madden. Mm, I yeah. love the drop. Well, he's a coach's son. That's right. And he's very intelligent. And you say dependable. I mean, he has a nickname, Raider Nation, third and Renfro, because yeah. the man is so <laughs> dependable on third down. You know, another guy that showed up big time this this week, mm -hmm. how about Marcus Mariota? We saw him get in. Uh, in yeah. moments, and I thought that really changed the tone. And, and what does he bring to an offense when you are the defense going up against? Well, you have to study different packages, understanding that he could be a, a, a potential big-time game changer. So it forces you to study more film, and so you might have to kind of uh, leave some other stuff on the ground. But the point I like is this right here. He got up after that play, and he was fired up. He was. I really love that about his, uh, his team-oriented thinking. It, absolutely. Look at it. He's fired up yeah, right here. I, I love that. Me too. I loved it because he, he's showing he's a football player and they can use him in different facets and parts of the game. And look, and they're utilizing him the right way. What do you have to do to stop him? If Mariota's in, they're going to load the box. Yep. Well, what happens? You saw the shot he took downfield to Hunter Renfro today. Should have been P.I. Uh -huh. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Should have got the defensive pass interference called. But more things open up. And I love how he's able to run the football. And we'll see. Maybe he'll throw some more passes this yeah. week. At, at the end of the day, he makes an offense more complex, and you have to worry about a guy that has legs like Marcus Mariota. All right, coming up next, Raiders defense. How did they stack up against Carson Wentz and company? We're talking about it. That is next. Stick around. Get that out of here. This segment of Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. My name is Jocelyn Bencion. I am a senior and I play flag football. Being selected as the in and out and impact player of the week. It means so much. At Rancho, I, I'm part of the medical program. I like to help out and you know, like be around. On the football field, I just help out the girls there. I like to like be their motivation and like put the passion that I have for the game in, into them. Thank you guys so much for letting me come out here to enjoy such a day like this. All right, Jonathan Taylor and the Colts have won every game. He has rushed for over 100 yards this season, except for today. <laughs> so this is all we're going to talk about is the defense in yeah. this block. And Nate Hobbs, fifth round rookie, showing up big for us. Of course, nowhere to go but up from here. Um, not only Nate Hobbs, defensive line, I felt like kept the pressure on Carson Wentz all game long. What did you see out of the defense, E, oh, I, I that loved impressed it. you? I loved it. For the third week in a row, the interior defenders really showed up. I think when you're talking about a young guy, Divine Diablo's a young guy. I mean, he had a really tremendous uh, impact in this game today. Phylon, you know Max is always going to be around the ball. Of course, Denzel Perryman. But the interior guys really played at a very high level, all spurred on by unique in Guacway. Mm. He was a baller today mm. all over the football field from the first play to the last play. I mean, he really got this defense 
really on another level. So love that aspect well, of the game. And those are the looks I loved. Gus Bradley had some of his linebackers up in the A-gaps, and then what they do, they drop out, and you feel a defensive back coming off the slot. I mean, they moved around, they switched up coverages. Look at right here, they blitz off the slot. The pocket collapses fast. Wentz has nothing to do, has to throw the ball away. So they were after him, coming off the slot again. Good pickup there by, by the Colts. Yeah. But what's he do? You know, they're around Wentz. You got to just tackle him. Sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, the defensive yeah. back, you want that You're ball. You're trying to get the ball, <laughs> trying to get the ball out. Here, this is Hobbs. You're talking about EC. Hobbs, great job by staying with it, sticking with it. But let's not worry about the ball right now. Let's get uh, that sack. Let's get Carson Wentz yeah. on the ground, not give him an opportunity to make a play. But defensively, really creative today. Outstanding job. Once again, a really tremendous run offense. Pretty much held him in check. More importantly, though, you're not going to be able to hold that running game in check all along, but you have to keep those receivers from making explosive plays. Only one explosive play today, and that was basically a tip ball, right? We should have picked off. So on the outside today, the corners did a really good yeah. job of shutting it down. That's a great point. I mean, I just think overall, I, I loved how Gus Bradley's defense was changing it up. Coverages, was changing up blitz looks, was after the quarterback. Put pressure on Wentz. You could say he missed a few throws. Yeah. But that's because he's feeling the heat. So as a quarterback, when you step up and you're like, oh, I got to get rid of it, and you miss the throw because you're feeling guys around you. So just a really good job defensively. They played with some attitude today. Mm. And I can't wait to see you next week. I Come know. Watch yeah. out, doesn't it? But, you know, it's so good to see what Gus Bradley is getting out of his squad at the right time right. ahead of their last game against the Chargers. We'll talk all about that. Coming up next, we've got plenty more Raiders game day after the break. Stick around. It's been an exciting season, you know, a lot of a lot of close games, which is, you know, how the league is supposed to be. So um, huge team win, you know, it wasn't always pretty, um, but we found a way to win and uh, win, win with the last second kick again. That's right. Raiders showing the love to the late great coach with a big win over the Colts. And thanks to a walk off field goal, courtesy of that guy right there, Daniel Carlson. I would say clutch and Carlson go hand in hand. They but do. you know what? It's got to be nice to have a guy that can handle hostile, high pressure situations and just go in ice cold. It looks so easy, right? right? But <laughs> there's so much to go into that. You know, it's just really difficult to continue to put yourself in that situation where it's boom or bust. It, you're right. I mean, we take it for granted, right? After the Renfro play and he gets down by contact, we are, well, yeah, we won. We're just going to run the clock. <laughs> you, you don't know the offensive line has to do their job, the yep. snap, the hold. And then Carlson, he is so clutch. He's got ice in his veins. So clutch. You think they were lying. He's got one play. That's He's it. sitting on the bench. And you hey, go ahead, dude. Hey, <laughs> but by the way, you got to make this. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure at yeah. all. Yeah. You, we talked about it in the production meeting. The man has to have so much mental toughness yeah. to be able to do what he does. He had four game-winning field goals this season alone as we take a look, 32-35. A 91 percentage uh, in field goal, 58 long. I mean, the, yeah. I mean, you're spot on. The mental toughness, the mental focus mm -hmm. to stay within, you know, it's like a golf swing, which I'm not good at golf at all. EA, so I don't, <laughs> but, you know, you have to stay consistent with that form and you got to trust your practice because you get in there and you got one chance. You could overthink it. Yes. Like, oh, don't pull it left. Oh, the wind, the rain. The, you know, he was in indoors today, but still, you can overthink it. So his mental focus and tough. This is it's, it's purely uh, awesome. <laughs> it's, we got a good one. We got a good we one. We got a good one. <laughs> Four game-winning walk-off field goals. I mean, that to me is amazing. Our record could look a lot different if Daniel Carlson wasn't on our team. Yeah. Should have gone to the Pro Bowl, but, <laughs> yes. you know, hashtag right. snubbed. All right, coming up next on Raiders Game Day, we are taking a look at the playoff picture and how the Raiders are going to get to the postseason with a win over the Chargers, we discuss. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This segment of Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in. Modelo. A taste that's pure gold. 
approved for those with a fighting spirit. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Las Vegas Raiders. And by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. John's a genius. He's a football genius, the Madden game. Most importantly, he's just a genius about people. He can read and be so insightful, almost instantaneously. He's unselfish. He shared a lot of his knowledge with me and with others. He's taught so many people so much about football. John was not only introduced to the American public, you know, as a coach, but the light beer commercials, you know, and breaking through and boom and all of that. That's when everybody fell in love with John because here was this big guy and they'd seen him stalking the sidelines, but now they found out that, that this guy was fun and likable and had a lot to offer. John was just like a slice of Americana uh, that everybody could relate to. He'd be on a bus and he'd stop in the middle of small cities along all the routes that he knew, riding around on the bus and the train. He knew all of the ins and outs and nooks and crannies of America. And he related to everybody. I mean, John was happy when he could chew some gum in a diner off I-70 in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, the people would come up to him and he could relate to those folks. And he was happy to be in their company. And John never looked up and never looked down on anybody. It didn't matter what your walk of life was. Everybody knew Madden, and Madden had time for everybody. He is, uh, you know, a national treasure. A larger-than-life personality, the Raiders honoring the Hall of Fame coach John Madden with a big win over the Colts tonight. Welcome back into Raiders game day. Aaron Coscarelli, Bruce Gorkowski, Eric Allen back with you. The Raiders looking to make the postseason for the first time since 2016. They just need to get past those pesky Chargers who rolled past the Broncos 34-13. Take a look at the current AFC playoff picture. They face the Chargers for the second time who beat them 28-14. Let's talk about the first game, and yep. how do we change that this time around, E? <clears throat> a little surprised, uh, that first game. I thought uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, the Raiders were outcoached, outplayed in every phase of the game. <clears throat> I thought they had a tremendous game plan uh, against us. But again, <clears throat> there's been some changes lately with this Chargers football team, kind of up and down and not playing consistent, but they have qualified superstars, have an outstanding quarterback in Herbert, they have Eckler, who's an all-around back. Of course, Big Mike Williams, number 81, is a terrific receiver. I'm not sure if Keenan Allen's going to be available, but he's a terrific, terrific football player. Then on the other side of the ball, you got Bosa, you got Derwin James, you got Asante Sanders. So you're Sanders saying they're Jr. all good. <laughs> They all got good ball players. <laughs> all good ball players. They have their hands full, but it's Sunday night now yes. at home. Sunday Woo night, that's right. And I'll tell you what, the one message this week, you got to stop them on four downs defensively. Yeah. It's four downs, not three. They're not punting on fourth down. He can go for it anywhere on the field, four downs. You got to play four downs in four quarters all game long. Well, what gives you confidence that this team can get it done, E? Defense, defense, defense. This defense has been playing lights out for the last three weeks, making tremendous plays, particularly against running football teams. You love that every single week, EC, that we're going to bring that defensive line, relentless pass rush, and now attacking the run to the ballpark. I will go with that any day of the week. And, you know, the offensive line is looking better, yes. right? That was a big issue heading into this season. A lot of things changing, but the run game, getting hot at the right time, right, Bruce? And they protected Carr today. Yep. I mean, they look strong. So, in four four downs. They in four quarters. They absolutely look strong. All right, well, the Raiders looking to finish off the season with oh, a let's big go. It's gonna win be, it's against gonna be packed the Chargers. In the house this week. Woo. Can they do it? Bruce, this was so fun. Wow. Join us again, okay, Bruce? Gotta keep For Bruce Strepkowski, Eric Allen, I'm Aaron Coscarelli. We will see you next week, hopefully celebrating a big dub. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.